Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the ERCI webinar on tunnel health monitoring with advanced technologies. This, this will, will, will be the last uh, webinar before Christmas. My name is Matsuna, former partner for business and technologies, uh, one of the partners of the ERCI, the European Railway Clusters Initiative. Uh, first, I like uh, I take the opportunity to uh, introduce uh, you to the European Railway Clusters Initiative. It was founded in 2010 uh, and being a legal entity uh, based in Brussels since 2022. For the moment, it covers uh, 16 railway clusters uh, from 16 European countries, uh, but we are expected uh, to uh, grow in the near future. Uh, all these 16 clusters are covering about 2,000 companies. Most of them are small and medium-sized enterprises, but uh, all other institutions related with uh, the railway sector like R&D, education, incubators and accelerators. Yeah, our services uh, mainly for SMEs uh, are uh, yeah, the support uh, on different ways uh, we are uh, in charge uh, or we are intended to uh, move on with uh, innovative uh, topics, with innovation topics, which might be uh, interesting for the future railway system, like cybersecurity, multimodal logistics, green and su sustainable mobility, norming and standardization and human factors. Yeah, we uh, give uh, SMEs uh, a vis visibility on European level. We are organizing, uh, for instance, partner matchmaking in uh, research and development projects as uh, uh, in the uh, framework program Horizon Europe uh, or Europe's Rail. Uh, yeah, we are conducting uh, bi bilateral workshops and webinars. Uh, this webinar is one of uh, uh, the numerous uh, 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 webinars we already had. And uh, our highlight uh, per year uh, are the annual ESCI Innovation Awards, uh, which will be uh, awarded next year uh, during the Indotrons. Uh, you can find some more information by following our website. Uh, the Twitter or X channel and uh, the LinkedIn uh, channel. So uh, now I will hand over to uh, Guido Ankarani. Uh, he is Operations Director of ERCI and uh, Business Development Manager at uh, the ERCI Partner Cluster DTEC Fair. And uh, he is in charge for the LIDA 2030 project. It is the first uh, project managed or coordinated by ERCI, and uh, Guido will uh, explain you the project and the current running uh, European consultation for the railway industry. Uh, Guido, uh, it's your floor. Thank you very much, Lutz. Good morning, everybody. Yes, my name is Guido Ancarani, and I will try to give you some uh, elements about the LEADER 2030 project that uh, ERCI is leading. It's a Europe's Rail project and uh, LEADER 2030 acronym is for Learning for European Autonomy to Deliver Europe's Rail in 2030. So we are in the frame of Europe's Rail. Uh, it's an exploratory uh, action. Um, we will see that uh, you, you have uh, the, the website where the uh, the project is uh, better described. Uh, I will give you some elements about it. Uh, the partners are ERCI, uh, JKZ, Railenium and Technopath, we will see later on. Uh, what is important is that we, again, we are able to, uh, to provide uh, a project, working for a project in which uh, all of you are uh, involved in a way or in another. You will see the details. Next slide, please, let, Lutz. So uh, let's start. No, one back. One back. Okay. What is uh, this uh, 
a slide for just to explain that uh, uh, with, with the lesson of the pencil of uh, Milton Friedman, you will see that uh, you 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 will discover that this pencil is more com more uh, complicated than expected in terms of components to produce this pencil, because uh, in order to do it to manufacture it, we need uh, components from ten different countries. Uh, the graphite is coming from Mexico and Brazil. We have the wood from Sweden or South, South Africa, aluminium from uh, China, Mozambique, uh, the rubber from Thailand, Malaysia, and uh, the, the lacquer from Kazakhstan, Estonia. So this is for a pencil. Imagine for a railway product or a railway subsystem or a complete system. So uh, Europe's Rail, the joint undertaking uh, following and uh, uh, managing uh, uh, European uh, uh, research and development and innovation uh, activities at European level, has issued a, a call, call for tender, uh, with uh, some uh, few uh, keywords which uh, are so important, like supply chain needs of the future, constraints in terms of supply, risk of supply availability. Here now already we are entering in the team of this uh, LEADER 2030 project and strategic options to ensure resilient solution and autonomy within Europe. The aim is certainly arriving to 2030, being able to use, uh, uh, to, to deliver all the innovation which are on the Europe's rail uh, framework. And uh, in order to deliver, we have to ensure that the value chain will have enough material and components to produce and deliver such innovation. Why this is a, a challenge? It's not a challenge in, in itself, is that the railway is not the only one using all those uh, materials, uh, hertz, uh, rare hertz uh, components and uh, other uh, elements. Uh, we are in competition with uh, aviation, we are in competition with defense, we are in competition in terms of uh, value chain uh, supply with other sectors. And according to uh, different maps that you can see here, and we start with the, the bottom right one is the problem of climate change. Climate change with heat uh, increase with the red area in the world. We have also uh, the drought because this is another effect of uh, the climate change. And uh, in order to uh, um, ensure all this, all this uh, uh, supply of components and uh, uh, materials, we have also to consider their origin. So in the map in the bottom with the blue areas, you understand, you see that the, the components, the, the, the main components that will be used are coming from area outside Europe. So, uh, we don't have also, we, we have also to consider the different uh, recent disruption that we have uh, uh, seen with the logistic chain or the COVID-19 effect and things, uh, similar effects that we have to consider. All these bring us to examine the situation and try to give a solution, not solution, but at least a, a clear view to Europe and to Europe's rail in order to face those uh, necessity and, uh, and needs. Next slide. So LEADER 2030 is a project, uh, is a TRL 3-4 project aiming in 30 months to uh, establish all uh, those uh, elements that will be useful for the future and verify this availability of being able to uh, put in the on the ground the different innovation and manufacture the product con 
re regarding those innovation. So as I said, uh, we have uh, organized the, 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 the project with four partners, ERCI, where we have already explained about its composition of 16 cluster uh, in, in Europe, Relenium, which is the, the technological center in France, able to and will uh, prepare and work on work package two, which means uh, examine all the needs from a technical point of view about the innovation which are already mapped in the master plan of Europe's rail. Uh, GKZ in Germany, who is the cluster for mining, because also those are the material that uh, the raw material that we will need in order to manufacture the innovation. And the Technopark Istanbul has this leadership in World Package 5, where we will compare the needs of the different uh, raw material and components in different sectors in order to see what I've called competition. Competition means who has the priority in having uh, in accessing to those uh, components and raw material. So during the 30 months, uh, we will uh, make uh, uh, five steps until uh, to deliver the final analysis. And today we are in the uh, first uh, activity, which is the study of the past to identify alerts for the future. Uh, next slide. In order to do this, uh, we have established a, a, a consultation on disruption because this will help us giving having uh, the information from all the suppliers, which can be small, uh, medium enterprises or large enterprise uh, or uh, the, the stakeholders in, uh, in the railway world will help us with this answering to those this consultation to map all the disruption. So this consultation is open until the 17th of December and then I invite all uh, the participants to this webinar to answer to it. Uh, even if there are no disruption faced by the uh, the, the company. It's also this is, a, is a, an important message for us that we will aggregate with other uh, elements. Confidentiality of data is uh, uh, assured and uh, in order to reach all the possible uh, companies, uh, we have established this uh, consultation in multi-language. You will find the QR code for all the languages that we have, uh, uh, in which we have translated the consultation. So please, again, please uh, contribute. It takes few minutes. It helps you now and in the future, but also the European rail industry. So uh, with uh, your answers, we will be able to map this at European level. Next. Next. Oops, thank you. So thank you for uh, your attention. And uh, now um, I would like to uh, give the floor to, uh, to Federico, uh, but I would like to introduce him saying that uh, Federico working in ATS as a BSc in Structural and Geotechnical Engineering, an MSc in Geotechnical Design, and a PhD in Risk and Sustainability for Civil Engineer System. He's in ETS since uh, 2019 as head of the Geotechnics, Geology, and the Hydraulics Department, and since 2022 is head of the Department of Research and Development. Last year, and I'm proud to, to underline this, he was the winner of the EFCA Future Leader as the best under 35 engineer in Europe for project on infrastructure maintenance, innovation and sustainability. So with this introduction, Federico, please, the floor is yours. Let's say something about your experience and uh, 
your presentation on tunnel health monitoring with sustainable advanced technologies and uh, artificial intelligence. I think that uh, the, the theme is uh, so interesting that uh, we will uh, all hear it with pleasure. Federico, please. Thank you. Thank you, Guido. Thank you, Luz. Thank you, everyone. And after this presentation, uh, uh, I I hope you don't have too high expectation for me now for this, but I will try to match them as best as I can. And uh, but uh, it's really a pleasure to be here because it's always a pleasure to be to be here with all of you and uh, to talk about this uh, this team about what we are going to uh, to explain today to share about the, the experience uh, uh, that I have, especially on the monitoring, maintenance, inspection. Uh, uh, focusing on technological and sustainable aspect for this. Uh, so we are talking about present, but especially we are a window into the future today, considering also the introduction that uh, that uh, we had from you, Guido and from from us. So uh, let's jump in uh, directly. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, I will just give a quick introduction about uh, about ETS. And uh, this is really important to understand the framework in which we are uh, uh, now we are moving around during the presentation. So ETS is a civil engineering company that offers uh, uh, services in uh, design, survey, survey studies uh, all around 360. And, uh, and especially uh, ETS uh, is born inside the, the maintenance and uh, monitoring aspect for existing asset, especially bridges and tunnels, and especially in the railway sector. And, uh, and this was really important because it helped us to develop a lot of unique and innovative system for uh, for existing assets. This is what we are going to see today. Um, and we are really, uh, as you can see on the right, we are really, uh, we are a small medium enterprise, but uh, we, we are really proud about uh, achievement because thanks to uh, to our innovation and application actual project, uh, we, we we can get some recognition about it. So we, we are really happy to share them with you. Let's start with the, the vision about uh, the, the team that we are going to talk. So uh, our key aspect here is that uh, the infrastructure is a social value. I think this is uh, uh, undoubtedly important for everyone. And because uh, the infrastructure links communities, uh, links economies, links people, uh, links environments. So uh, the, there is no doubt that the infrastructure is a really important social value, especially railway infrastructure. And uh, uh, considering that the, the, the scene, the scenario that we have right now, uh, the maintenance aspect is really strategic. But why the maintenance aspect is so strategic? For a few couple of reasons that I will give into the, into the introduction, just to understand better the methodolo methodology that we are going to talk. First of all, uh, I will just be provocative, uh, saying that, uh, uh, showing this image, because uh, as you can see this image coming from our industrial colleague, uh, because I'm a civil, uh, also me, I'm coming from uh, a civil engineering structure. Well, here you can see that for an uh, industrial point of view, uh, a plant is uh, is considered eff uh, efficient when it has a level of maintenance at least proactive, at least proactive. Considering that generally in uh, in existing infrastructure, uh, in the management of infrastructure, our maintenance is uh, a lot of time reactive, a lot of time is can be planned. Just in few cases, it's uh, especially for civil civil works, it can be mixed between planning and proactive. So this means that there is a lot of room for improvement. And where there is room for improvement, we need innovation. But not only this, that maintenance is really important. Starting from this study that I'm going to show you that collect data from some of the most important railway authorities in Europe, you will see that uh, here we have a lot. I will focus, uh, as you know, especially on, on the tunnel, but this can be extended for, for bridge, for uh, uh, landslide works uh, and, and so on. You can see that we have a lot of tunnels in, in Europe and the average years is really high. Uh, you can see uh, but generally at least 70 years. Italy is more than 100 years, but we, the, the average value is lower because we have a lot of mechanized tunnels that we built recently for the high speed, high speed uh, network. So not only we have uh, 
the maintenance is really important. Not only we have a, a really complex network in Europe, but the existing complex uh, network is really is really old and getting older. So these people, we need to think about the asset as people that they want to retire, but we are asking them to extend their life. And uh, to do this, we need to support them in some way. Not only if you are going more in the technical aspect of this, uh, the, the material and the methodology which they are realized for the oldest country, they are more or less the same. The, the, the scenario is really complex. We have a lot of different configuration, starting from the bare rock, to the mazarin, to the strong rumble, to the reinforced concrete, no reinforced concrete, precast concrete segment, precast concrete section, and, and so on. So it's really, uh, it's really important to have uh, a really broad view when we are talking about uh, especially civil works. Now let's go uh, into the details. Uh, we are going to talk uh, about two aspects that will be methodological and technological. And uh, the key point, uh, as you see in the presentation uh, title, uh, will be Arkita from the uh, technological hardware point of view and from methodological engineering software point of view, Myret. But what, what is what is Myret, which is the, the general approach and workflow that we will talk? Myret is management identification of the risk for existing tunnels. This means uh, just this representation in a very simple way, just want to show you that uh, existing asset and existing infrastructure, they need an holistic approach. They need an holistic approach because uh, it's really important to consider the component, but the relationship between these components can be of much more importance of just the single component itself. It's just like considering a human body. You cannot just uh, understand why you have a pain in the arm, just most of the time analyzing just the arm. You need to understand the relationship between the arm and the other part of the body. And for an existing asset, for an existing infrastructure, it's the same. What we are going to show you today, and was also uh, considering the, the table we are in today, was also winning of the DTEC Ferry Innovation in 2022 and the Ground Engineering Awards in 2020. Now, what we are going to do for each of these pieces of the puzzle, we are going to show you some technological advancement that we can do, starting from the state of the art that we have. Survey inspection. Survey inspection, the key answer for us is a mobile mapping system multidimensional. Here you can see the one developed by ETS, Arkita. And that, what does it mean, multidimensional mobile mapping? It means that mobile, so it's a vehicle, in this case it's a bimodal vehicle, that can run between uh, 50 and 30 kilometers for hours. And uh, in this just single passage, we can acquire and gather a lot of information. Uh, and uh, this information, uh, now we are going to see into the days which are this information. The advantage is to use a system which is able to be mobile and to acquire more information in a single passage is to avoid inter intrusive service where they are not necessary. Minimize the time of traffic disruption, which is really important for existing uh, lines. Increase operator safety because we have less operators and they can be also uh, located in more safety area. And improve the back office capabilities because we gather the data and we go back to the office. Here you can see the configuration with all the all the all the instruments here, but we are going to see them in details just in a few moments. But first of all, uh, I want to, to show you just a quick video because can I think can speak louder than a lot of words. And here you can see the passage of Arkita inside uh, a network, uh, a rail network tunnel with the acquisition, uh, so uh, also with the dark tunnel, with the acquisition, with the, the, the lights coming in, and uh, what is going to happen in the passage that I just showed you with Arkita. So first of all, uh, we will gather uh, inspection data. So we have a system, a tunnel scanning system with the acquisition of photo that help us to have a prospect, as you can see in the image in the bottom right part. And this image with the precision accuracy of one millimeter can be then uh, uh, aligned with thermal images. So we integrated the, the thermal image part with the photographic part also, and we integrate them also from the software point of view, in the, in, then in the mild software. 
So as you can see here, we are light area. You have the correspondence between one area and another. Then we have a point cloud, 3D point cloud, uh, with the laser scanning system. Then we have ground penetration radar on the bottom. Ground penetration on the bottom, here you can see everything in this presentation is detailed for railway, but the same can be done in the road configuration. Here you can see a ground penetration radar configuration for the bottom, specifically designed uh, to detect uh, uh, anomalies and thicknesses for the, for the ballast, depending always on the configuration that we will find. Then we have uh, uh, the acquisition system of ground penetration radar for the lining, so especially for the tunnel. This system, this system is really particular, is, is another, is, is one of the main systems on Akita patented by, by us, and is with uh, a telescopic arm. And uh, we are actually now investing in uh, automatizing even more this system with, uh, with, with robotics. And this is really important because then can help without using uh, hand, hand labor, scaffolding, and other system. It is really speed up a lot the process of, of acquisition. So in the end, this is just a quick video to show you an example, uh, like a representation on actual tunnel. So what is going to happen generally? Sometimes we have, we can also have no information at all. We have the passage with Arquita with the point cloud system and others, as we will show you later on. We can reconstruct geometry, but we reconstruct the state of the tunnel, especially for the, the in uh, for the inner lining. We combine this with thermal images in other system, and this helps us to obtain the vulnerability maps that I will show you in the test. But here is really understandable the process with the vulnerability map, which is on the top on the top right one. So what is going to happen that the video was sh was showing us now let's move on the risk part starting from this acquisition so we have uh, the hd photo the thermal images we have the ground penetration radars acquisition we can also have other information we combine this information with the defects catalog so in my what we what we did and what we are still doing so we didn't uh, uh, come out with another catalog. We just combined the main catalog, in this case, uh, for, uh, for the Italian authorities. And this, this catalog, so they, they have a correspondence to one another for the inner lining. So we are more working on the integration of the system also from the regulation point of view. After this combination, then you can perform a, a manual acquisition to detect the defects. Uh, detecting defects allows you to, to, to obtain a digital twin of the spectrum because you will have on the prospect a completely digital model where you can extract quantities, you can extract intensities, you can locate all the elements, you can measure everything, you can extract CAD spreadsheet on whatever you want. Is uh, uh, a, uh, a information modeling for the inspection. Then what's going to happen? We are, we are, we are doing this operation for years. So uh, we understand really well what does it means as uh, as proficiency from the NOI point of view and from the production point of view doing this operation. For us, also the impact for the authorities. So we, we developed in the last four years a project for the automatization with uh, a system of artificial intelligence coming from the uh, combination of image processing. In this case, this year, we came out officially with this service so this is Myret Tunnel AI that we, I'm showing to you. And we are already applying this almost in, uh, in the, it came out in, uh, in uh, between September and October, the first release, and we already applied almost on 50 kilometers of tunnels in Italy with really, really, really extremely good results, especially for the support. This is an assistance to the uh, expert judgment of the engineers and technicians. So it can really help a lot speeding then the production, as you can see. In our case, is divided in uh, different categories. As I showed you in the beginning, it's really important in tunnel to understand the methodology of the construction and the material. So uh, here, the main uh, clusterization of the, uh, of the inter artificial intelligence algorithms is based on the characteristic of the, yeah. of the, of the lining. OK. Then the other focus is on digitalization. Digitalization, as as we uh, we, we we were seeing uh, in the in the puzzle, 
here is performed in the video is performed. We can also have just a few information. We go inside with this few information and we can start the digitalization process. Digitalization, the digitalization process with the basic uh, information requirement, obviously, because we are performing this the mobile passage. But as you can see, we can uh, gather a quite fair reconstruction uh, uh, for uh, preliminary phase or even the date phase, depending on the, on the, on the specification of, on, of the data, what we are going to do with data, starting from the combination of the point cloud with the ground penetration radars. And then we can also then uh, uh, perform and with what we do, maintenance uh, as built, but also maintenance project with an informative model approach. So this really helps us to integrate uh, the process uh, at the best as we can. But this implementation is just not an implementation once in a while. These implementations can be done over time. So here you can see, for instance, a prospect or photo for a mechanized tunnel that was done in 2013 and 2019 and 2020. So we can add the photo and the elaboration from this photo two times. We can compare uh, the combination of this analysis. Here you can see, for instance, the distribution of the main defects and, for instance, a single stretch of a, of a critical area for, uh, for the same tunnel to time. So it's just a really basic uh, explanation to understand how it's important to use these instruments. Then we can combine this vulnerability with other parameters, depending on the type of analysis, depending on regulations, and so on. Here I just show some some of them, like uh, uh, seismic characteristic, geology, geotechnics, geomechanics, and so on. But the important point is that then this element what we do in railway uh, network, with which then we combine this element with a specific uh, law and specific calibration uh, to obtain uh, an output, uh, which is like the one shown here, which is a risk, uh, a risk matrix of the tunnel. So starting from the maps that we have, then we can come up with the risk. A risk that can be qualitative, but can also be quantitative, depending on the step and the type of analysis that, that we do. And then the results, even in this case, the results can be compared to time. In this case, you can see, for instance, that there was a reduction of cracks between 2013 and 2019 before for some maintenance interventions that were done specifically for this for these cracks. And in 2019 and 2020, the monitoring that was done for this intervention showed that uh, there is almost like a stable condition. And this was really useful data for the management of the line uh, for the allocation of resources. For the for the authority. Now we will take a few minutes to talk about uh, uh, to talk about uh, sustainability. So first of all, I like to show you this not not only because this is like a shape of a tunnel in this circular way, but just because this is the point to be to start. Uh, for instance, just to just to tell like really two minutes a really brief story that can help understand how, how much these are important. Uh, let's take, for instance, uh, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the the one, the 16 one, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions. This one, like, is one of the most underrated uh, Sustainable Development Goals, especially in the case also of uh, uh, infrastructure sector like uh, uh, contractors, suppliers, uh, even authorities, and so on. And uh, considering that we are, I'm, I'm coming from, from Italy, we have a really strong example coming, for instance, in Second World War, where the, uh, the, the main station from Milano uh, was used to uh, deport Jewish people secretly with some mechanical secret system. And, uh, and, and this is really showing how our infrastructure can have really a strong impact on all this infrastructure are crucial not just for the for the nine uh, goal or for the resource goal and and so on they are really important for all the goals that we have here so we not just consider underrated and i just want to make this example to focus on one which is really important right now considering the, the general uh, situation that we have around the globe which is the one on peace and justice so our works really have an impact, and we really need to understand this. Then starting from this introduction, let's say practically, Akit and Miret, what they can do. Akit and Miret, which are the first focus, they were analyzed 
from the sustainability point of view. Because in our R&D department, we have a sustainability report for each innovation project, for which pro or process that we have. In this way, we can understand, uh, from starting from uh, baselines, uh, from, from the work, from the authorities and so on, we can understand the impact of our technology. We can also understand how to improve them. So here you can see, for instance, the analysis, the environmental analysis. We also perform social aspect, but here you can see environmental analysis. And just briefly, you can see that using mobile technologies like Arteta, using artificial intelligence like Marriott, uses digitalization like Marriott and integrated workflow mixed with the capacity of the engineers and technicians, this also all can, can help to mitigate and cut, for instance, emission up to 16 times, especially for ordinary, for the ordinary task. Um, so this can really have an impact, the, the technological aspect. You can see that other, other goals, environmental goals, they are not like so significant. They are more or less the same compared to to the baseline, the standard baseline for the for for inspection and analysis. Uh, but you can see that also we can 100% support the climate change adaptation risk, which is the one connected to the adaptation risk. How we can do it? We do it through a specific project. We analyze the context and we and we and we come up with okay, we have a gap here because we are still not ready to analyze completely the risk. We analyze the risk for structural point of view, we analyze the risk for geological point of view, hydraulic point of view, and so on, but we are still not ready to analyze the, the risk from the climate change point of view. So we started a project, a project that now is finished for its first implementation. So we are 100% uh, operational in, uh, in Italy, in the Lazio and Campania, Campania region, so middle and south, south Italy. And with this project, we started with, as you can see on the left, we started with a really important stakeholder engagement phase. You can see that uh, two years ago, the project was during, uh, you can see with all the people with the mask, was uh, uh, during the uh, one of, uh, between one of the two uh, main break breakdown that we had, we had in Italy. And uh, but uh, we, were, we were able to gather, let's say, the people. This engagement part is really important to have also a physical part. We involve the, the, the clients, the authorities, we involve contractors, we involve universities, we involve the representative for the people from the users, like with associations and so on. And, uh, and then afterwards, we involve the technical people to understand the parameters, how they can be applied and so on. All of this was put inside a really strong social and mathematical uh, implementation that helped us to understand the, the vulnerability of the of the assets this this vulnerability part was combined with an hazard part with a really uh, strong computational uh, uh, tool not only for the for the modeling that we took like let's say mostly data available but for, for also for the for the scaling of this data to the infrastructure uh, details that we need and this all this approach then is combined in the in the situ risk framework to obtain then the risk analysis here you can see an application for a railway line in italy uh, that can help then uh, analyze scenarios and understand adaptation adaptation strategies uh, so we we uh, we combine the remaining aspect thanks to the to the to the situ risk then we have also asset management asset management is uh, it's really important because we, we don't need to forget that our information, our outputs, then we will put inside the system, without inside an archive, or inside the, it can be digital, can be physical, can be whatever. And these outputs need to be functional for the management of the asset and for the management of the infrastructure. So it's really important to understand the process. This is what generally we do with this implementation. So. We, 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 we understand the requirements from here and from these requirements, we combine the flow of the data in the way that can be uh, more functional as possible for the one that then is going to manage this data from an operational point of view. Here you can see an example of a platform coming from Myret that, uh, for instance, we use in one, in one case to, to put inside the data from the, uh, for the evaluation, the, the, the assessment of the, of the tunnels, and also the assessment of the, 
uh, of the landslide risk. Here you can see also another another representation coming also from the same case study that, that you saw earlier. Here you will see just a uh, it's just a recap uh, of the technology that uh, that that we showed them, but uh, it's uh, it's it's really nice. And uh, and then as you can as we as we told you, then it's more understandable for you that starting from this data, that we can also combine with destructive elements and so on. Then we can obtain elements that can, are inside the risk approach. With this risk approach, we can then design. We can design. More, with more conscious, because not only we have the investigation campaign so on, but we have data and we have the historic of the data, so we can understand better the behavior, like for instance the interaction between structure and some soil. And then you can then intervene to time. This was what it was shown in the video. We had the first intervention, then we had the second intervention, because then there were other aspects to analyze and so on. So then you can. Uh, really, you can perform all of these uh, in, a, in a digital environment, in a common environment, which is most important for everyone. So I want to to, uh, to thank you all for the attention. I I finished just a few minutes earlier because I really would like to uh, to leave space a lot to the question and a bit of discussion that I like a lot. Uh, so I hope that uh, there will be a really good discussion afterwards and that the, this could be of interest uh, for, for all of you. Thank you for your attention. So, uh, Guido, will you overtake uh, the Q and A session? Uh, there are already uh, uh, some questions uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, screen, but I have to share my screen. I see. And maybe it functions now. Can you see my can you see yes. my screen? And I then see your you can, screen. I yeah. can read the question and then have the answer. So the first one is regarding Miret AI practical. Can you further elaborate on application for asset management? This is really important because uh, we it's one of the team that we, uh, topics that we have in uh, uh, develop in order. Uh, webinars in the uh, ERCI and uh, asset management is uh, interesting because we have seen tunnels, but uh, maybe you have other other things or opening uh, ideas about uh, asset management. Please, Federico. Yes, yes, that's that's really that's really interesting. So from the Starting from what what we showed, then then I will further extend. Starting from what we saw here, so practically what we can do. Practically, we are gathering information. So basically, like photo, like the state of the art, like it's done for the inspection. We can uh, assist technical people really fast, like you see minutes for kilometers. We can assess them really fast in performing preliminary assessment of the data because uh, the, the acquisition, they have a big data approach, even like no, no with, without mobile, even with, like the traditional one, they, they have a big data problem. The AI can help practically in transforming big data into smart data. So they are usable and they are also like, do you have a, you can speak with the data because then you can refine, you can change things, you can ask for something and so on for the technical people. And these put through times, can help you then in managing this big data pro problem into smart data problem, a smart data solution and asset management solution. So from the practical point of view, this is what is going to happen. From our point of view, now we have the answer for the tunnels because tunnels magari are less uh, studied compared to other type of structures like like bridges because bridges like they are open air so uh, you it's even easier to to train algorithms to do stuff so uh, they have they have certain problems for sure like all the structure all the implementation but it's not like going into a dark uh, uh, dirty uh, with difficult position uh, positioning problem and uh, with uh, sometimes with the uh, the traffic elements that can that can can be like uh, trickier and so on. 
So um, tunnel is really special from this point of view. But what we can do further? So uh, the same the same approach can be used for tunnel and for bridge, like for major artworks especially. And then after the, after this, uh, you can further help the assessment of the risk, the pre the pre assessment of the risk, using also a prediction artificial intelligence system. So a deep learning system, which is, let's say, uh, at, the, at some kind of other co co complexity like this one, but can help in predicting like the, the value of the risk. So we are going to move further the, le the level of assisting the technical people with also not only evaluation of vulnerability, but also with the evaluation of estimation of final factors of, uh, of risk. And of this will also then help in the acquisition phase. Because like the robotics that we are going to talk about uh, can be can be speed up the production a lot, uh, but then need a lot of automation inside. So the intelligence part will also go inside the automation, and we need a, an effort about automation in the in asset management framework. Because we are like a few people, we have a lot of asset, and we need to then to have. Uh, this kind of help in the elaboration phase, but also in the on-site phase. So we now we are both investing uh, for the infrastructure in general, but then here you can see, especially for tunnels, we are both investing like on the technological aspect from on-site acquisition. On the other side, uh, also on the technical aspect for the elaboration of the data and assessing of the risk. Good. So from tunnel to bridges, also for railway stations or not? Or it uh, for railway stations, less sense. Yeah, for railway station right now, uh, let's say we are less. We are less investigating this aspect from the innovation point of view uh, because. Uh, uh, in the railway station, like I talk about overhead station, because then underground station is, uh, let's say, an, another case. But for overhead, overhead station, right now we have uh, a project currently going uh, that will be currently going going on. Now we are, we are setting up that will be uh, a specialization of evaluation from the climate change point of view. So. We, we did the feasibility and we understand that the, the main aspect that needs to be analyzed is from that point of view, just because the station is the railway station is like a small city. So it's uh, it's really complex. The climate change part is really complex. But if I want to perform an assessment and asset management with the support of artificial intelligence or machine learning approach, depending on what what I'm going to look into, we have more stable, uh, more, more stable literature to work on. The point that now is lacking more is from this uh, the, the climate point of view. And uh, we also start uh, a project, so with the, the joint program, the European Joint Program for Climate Change, so with the institutions uh, for climate change uh, that uh, that are the, the reference for the European program. OK, so you are open also for future activities, not only limited to tunnels, but let's say. Yeah. Uh, OK, very good. Second question. How we can improve sustainability through tunneling maintenance and inspection, also through C2 risk? Yes. Uh, so uh, C2 risk was uh, I know that was just uh, a quick overview in the in the end, uh, but the point is that from then at the end from the inspection maintenance point of view, this is. Uh, like focusing on the question, C2 risk what can do? C2 risk can give you the assessment of the line of the infrastructure from the climate change point of view. So uh, analyze all the aspect. So if I have on a line, the railway station is uh, on a high level, but is analyzed. Bridges are analyzed. Tunnels are analyzed. Um, the, rail, the the linear part is analyzed. The embankment is analyzed. The landslide is analyzed, and, and so on. So here you will see the, 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 the shape of the, of the vulnerability and then the shape of the risk to the, to the alignment. Uh, this uh, then is combined through MIRET with the structural, hydraulic, and geological risk that, that we have for the, for the civil works. And this can help you understanding uh, when you have phenomena evolving through time, 
this can help you understanding uh, which is the which could be the trend of the risk because there is always a probability in this in this model what could be the trend of of the defects that we have inside the data so we we moved a lot higher scale and then we will go back at the calculation of the asset and we'll say also then combining this element we know that there will be a trend here regarding for instance a leakage that we have inside the tunnel because maybe it's a cut and cover tunnel with the heterogeneous soil for the for the for the cover with an hydraulic connection is from the 70s without waterproofing and so on and then we will say okay here there will be a trend because it's located here so you you need to understand that if you want to intervene with maintenance tomorrow then then it's better with also the same money doesn't mean that we need to spend more money but also with the same money you need like to take into account that maybe we need just to move the intervention a bit then instead of this kind of elements that can be, have a lower priority instead investing in something else it's a really complex let's say scenario to be analyzed but i think that uh, technical people and engineers are up to the task and uh, now we are also starting to have the like the mean to do it because here, uh, C2 risk and Marriott are an example that we have uh, the, the mean to do it. So we need to do it. Wonderful. So risk assessment and mitigation plan proposal. But uh, all this, uh, it's, uh, yes, it's part of uh, a big, uh, a big work and uh, uh, the next question is, can Arkita detect defects from standard? Okay, that's also another question that we receive a lot because uh, uh, people is always generally concerned, generally concerned about uh, uh, the kind of elements that we can acquire. So uh, what we can acquire is everything that is uh, uh, considering the precision and accuracy of one millimeter for the photo. This is a starting point to connect the data. So everything that uh, is more than one millimeter can be detected completely. So if you consider like a catalog, like coming from the, I don't know, for the tunnel is really like well known, the one from C2 in France, for instance, the one from the ITA, the International Tunneling uh, uh, Association and, and so on. So talking about what we were saying, the presentation, everything can be detecting up from all the standards that are present, Italian regulation guidelines for the for tunnels and so on. So everything can be detected to up to standards, to all the more uh, updated standards compared with the precision accuracy that we connect the elements of. So it means a big database at the end also. Yeah, yeah, you can have like, uh, if I show like a prospect with all the elements like digital, I show a really simple one just with the water defects. But then if you consider like the Italian guidelines with more than, uh, let's say, more than uh, 40, uh, 45 uh, defects and so on, you can have all detected on, on it because just all, just the movement that we are on the prospect that we cannot detect, all the other elements are on it. Good. Next question. How often break roofs down while building new tunnels? OK, uh, this is uh, also like an inter interesting question. We are not talking about existing like tunnels. We take like a, 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 a short breath and we go inside new tunnels. But uh, uh, the, I think this is like really super like uh, actual topic because I mean, maybe uh, a lot, some of you can know that the, 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 there was a break roof like some weeks ago in India and uh, 41 people uh, uh, were trapped inside, so uh, tunnel workers. And uh, uh, I also, I had the opportunity uh, to, to join a task force from the International Tunneling Association. So it was, uh, let's say it was really uh, quite an experience. So I'm quite uh, sensitive in this moment to, uh, to, to this matter also, because um, it was really a one in a lifetime experience to do it. And so how often break roofs down while building new tunnels? So generally not so. Let's, let's first assure people that uh, it doesn't help so often, uh, because uh, now we have uh, a state of the art in building new tunnels and also in, in the knowledge behind building new tunnels, investigation, modeling, monitoring, which is fundamental, observational approach is fundamental, with all this state of the art that we have that currently in most of the world, 
we have. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's really rare. Uh, this happens generally when you have an unpredictable situation that you, you did your best also with the monitoring, but sometimes there can be some behavior from soil or from, from rock that uh, can stress more the situation that we have inside the dam. In this case, a uh, roof can break this case. Not only roof can break the material behind, like uh, a busting uh, inside the deep tunnel in mountains. This can happen, for instance. In soft soil uh, for uh, creep behavior, for instance, you have a lot of stresses uh, uh, accumulated inside the lining. It's unpredictable, so you also have a break inside. So I would say that you can, uh, we, we can, we can sleep well from this point of view because uh, <laughs> roof uh, break inside. We have an example from India, but the roof can break really, really, really suddenly inside tunnel. Okay, we will not uh, list all the tunnels that we have uh, with some uh, railway problem for the time being, but it's uh, interesting to know that we can sleep uh, uh, smoothly. So. Uh, the next two questions, I would like maybe to uh, uh, put them together. Do you need a special train, or you can or, or you can install equipment? I imagine on uh, on which kind of train and uh, uh, what is uh, uh, the operation speed? You have already okay. said something, but maybe it's yeah. good to. Yeah, to, to further elaborate. So the, the speed, uh, the speed is between, uh, let's say, five and thirty kilometers per hour. The limit of thirty kilometers per hour uh, is connected uh, in Italy and is like this in uh, most other, also other European country to the to the speed uh, limit connected to uh, operational vehicle on site, generally. Uh, because uh, it's uh, always like uh, performing an inspection general survey is a mobile uh, construction site. So you, you need some kind of limit depending on this. But regarding the instrument, for instance, if you just need the ground penetration radar acquisition, ground penetration radar can acquire like at 100 kilometers per hour also. Yes, you need to compromise. You need to compromise on uh, acquisition results that you have, but uh, everything also always depends on the the output and what we are going to do with the output. So then, in the end, uh, we can uh, everything can be studied uh, with the regulations, uh, with the operation on on site, uh, and, and so on. But uh, the operational speed, which is one hundred percent for us, uh, is between five and between thirty thirty kilometers per twenty five kilometers per hour. We will not move at the limit, the exact limit. So it's like this. For the special train, Arkita is a special train and special bimodal vehicle because Arkita can go on train and can go on road. Because, for instance, if we want to go to rail, sometimes we have a lot of problem with the logistics. So Arkita can go on his wheels, can go there. And then can then uh, jump on rail. I will just put it simply, but it's just to understand and then perform his activity and then go back home. And uh, so that's it's really important. And then uh, Arkita has a lot of customization from the hardware point of view, because connecting this element is not just a question of software. It's generally a question that this needs some kind of stable elements. They need mechanics. They need electronics. Uh, they need a lot of things on it. So Arkita is a special vehicle. Then some of these elements we can install also on others. We did a lot of jobs when we start some part of the element, just the laser scanner, just the scanning photo acquisition and so on, on a just the train vehicle or uh, just the road, uh, road trunk and, and so on. So yes, can be done. We do. You have to unmute. Yes, sorry. Uh, maybe link to this uh, question of speed. The, the next one is, in my opinion, connected. Based on this technology, the tunnel defects uh, about the crack line. Uh, which one uh, up to uh, the, the, the question is, is it able to be seen if the crack line is less than three millimeter? 
Yeah. Is it a question yeah, of speed? Is it a question of uh, is a is a matter is a matter of uh, is, is is a matter of speed the condition of work? But in the condition of work that I presented you, it's we can easily detect crack lines that are between three millimeter, but also with the limit that I give you. So more than one millimeter uh, can we detect? So between one millimeter and three millimeter to answer the question, we can detect everything. Okay, we have uh, uh, at least a last question here in the, on the slide. So, uh, excellent presentation. So, congratulations from uh, outside, not only from me. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, ETS is member of uh, DTEC Fair. You are a brand new member, but uh, very active. So, um, uh, you know that DTEC Fair has uh, two pillars, research and development and internationalization. So the question here is how can we use integrate your technologies and methodologies in other European countries? But I don't want to to limit the borders to Europe. Let's go also outside. How can it can it can be used uh, outside outside Italy? Because okay, okay. Uh, that's also another uh, good good question because we can use this. Uh, uh, we can use uh, the technologies and the methodologies in other European countries. So obviously we need uh, we need to understand the context because uh, uh, using a technology needs technological aspect. So for instance, like the, the rails configuration is really important when talking about a rail network. So uh, to understand if the spacing, all the consideration are fine from the technology. So need a feasibility study on the line but this we already we do the same in italy it's just that in italy we know really well the configurations but uh, we do the same like uh, like this we did a lot of like also offer like i in other european countries and so on where we could perform the feasibility and we were able from the technological point of view to perform the to perform to perform the survey so from the technological point of view i will say yes definitely and then if cannot be done, because there will be some cases that cannot be done, then depends always on the final aim and output that, that, that we have what we need. Because, for instance, sometimes they ask us to perform the survey with 10 instruments, but uh, then they need the inspection to be put inside the asset margin framework. So they just need a scanning system and then integrate them with the investigation campaigns that they already did. It's just an example to understand that not all it can be integrated, but uh, it's it's not uh, uh, it's not a so static system. So some elements can be also be modular, like we were answering uh, to the installing question before. From the methodologies, 100 percent, because we can have differences in European countries, like for uh, the kind of lining, the technology, some technological aspect of lining. Uh, uh, we can have uh, interaction, different some different elements, and so on. But then uh, uh, the methodology is, is called it like this because it's extendable. It's not just something that we apply the, on a specific element. And uh, we, for instance, we are doing right now, uh, uh, we will do, uh, we, we, we are preparing, we're doing, we will do shortly uh, a campaign for the artificial intelligence part also in the UK, for instance. And, uh, uh, and uh, we are participating on artificial intelligence uh, standard with uh, uh, the, the European framework of context from the, uh, the, the, the steering committee of, uh, of the tunneling maintenance. Uh, and uh, so just to me is that these are methodological aspects and then algorithms that are based on strong then engineering and technical know-how. These help us to, to make them really understandable. And from the broader asset management framework, then it's also easily extendable because we are based then on principles that are inside the, for instance, the ICO uh, 55,000. So, so basically the cycle of the asset management, the kind of information that you need, uh, the digitalization that is based on, on the ICO standard for the information modeling. So or everything is open formats and so on. So everything here is extended, it's not close to the, to, to the Italian standard. It's specified for Italian standards. So maybe can need some customization, but it's based on international standards and principle that makes them easily to be extended outside the Italian in general in Europe especially. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't see any other question for the time being. Uh, 
Are you able to say two words about the work of ATS concerning uh, cultural heritage, what you are doing with some of uh, our... <laughs> <laughs> our yes. yes like Colosse or other yeah, activities yes, yes, you are doing yes, yes. there because I think it's yes. interesting it's not internally but it's uh, something that you are able to to do and you are promoting it so if you were two yeah, words yeah, please yeah. I will say two words generally about the heritage work that we are doing then I will also say a few words about about Colosseum but I just want to uh, give a framework that uh, we work uh, we work in Italy so and uh, we work on existing uh, elements so obviously we have uh, a strong background on um, on heritage heritage from all the point of view in our company we have an architecture department for instance which is specialized uh, in restoration and um, and on heritage uh, for the for the building point of view for uh, infrastructure point of view and so on so for building for the bridge for all all the elements because uh, it's really common to in Italy to work, for instance, on existing line, like historic line, and then have a bridge of more than 150 years, have a tunnel of 200 years, and everything needs to be assessed uh, really, really accurately also from this point of view. So we also have an experience here with uh, with uh, really a lot like um, uh, really like a lot a lot a lot of bridges and a lot of tunnels a lot of railway station a lot also like of major artworks like we had for instance recently a really major retaining walls which is it was historic coming from the beginning of the 19th century which it was was uh, like the the height was more, more than 50 meters and uh and uh and that's really important we worked like on coastal railways so that, that's also important because there is an heritage aspect mixed with touristic aspects of really old lines across across costa, coastal and uh, and so on. Uh, but just to give a focus like on something that can be more interesting, I will start uh, I will start from the, the focus of the presentation because uh, Guido, we also did the work on the uh, uh, the the subway, the metro line in Rome. So we'll talk also about Rome. So they are also really important, some of them from the historic point of view. They have a lot of curious historic facts on it. And we did here, we passed with, with Akita and we did also the diagnostic part that, that was shown inside the presentation. Uh, and then uh, we are doing that right now, we just we are concluding our part and uh, for, uh, for, the, for the current work that we have with the digitalization of the, of the Colosseum. So there was the survey part, then there will, now we closed our part on the information modeling, so the BIM model for the for the for the Colosseum. This part then is linked with uh, also the diagnostics, so the recognition of the of the defects. So it's a project with more than like more than ten thousand uh, drawings and so on, not just the uh, not just the models that are really they have really a strong weight. And uh, but then this model will also be used and linked for the for the management of the utilities for the for the for the management of all the building historic part and so on. So it's not just the digitalization the beam. This beam will then will have a purpose for the uh, heritage management of the of the Colosseum. Yes, I was impressed about this activity, so I thought it was a good idea to to make. Uh, Two, two minutes of uh, advertisement, but also put in evidence this work. So no other question in the meantime. So I think that uh, for the presentation point of view from uh, ETS, thank you very much, Federico. I thank you to you. Back uh, the, the floor to uh, to Lutz for the continuation of this uh, of this webinar. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Guido. Uh, thank you, Federico, for the interesting presentation. Thank you to all of you for your interesting questions. And uh, I'll give you some uh, further information on ESCI activities. First, uh, my strong request or our strong request to uh, follow our short feedback questionnaire. We are very pleased to receive your feedback on this webinar, uh, on the organization of the presentation. 
and maybe on future topics, maybe you are also interested in present yourself at one of the future webinars. Uh, you are kindly invited to uh, uh, to propose a, a topic and uh, uh, then we can see what we can do with your timetable. We will get uh, in contact to you and will uh, uh, propose you uh, then a suitable date, uh, 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 which uh, would be offered for one of the next uh, ERCI webinars. Uh, we would be very pleased to do so. So uh, then uh, there is a uh, uh, cluster further cluster collaboration project which is uh, still ongoing and uh, which is initiated by uh, ERCI. Uh, the project is called uh, is called uh, Success uh, and. It, aims to support the European small medium sized enterprises of the rail supply industry in successfully applying to public procurements in USA, Canada and Norway. And uh, there is a an, uh, an, uh, project website uh, available uh, which you can receive some more details on the project and furthermore there are in operation through uh, three tenders watch newsletters uh, one for USA one for Norway and one for Canada and uh, please find on the right side of this table the contact data you have to contact uh, 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 Miss Irina Vescu for USA, uh, Miss Garazi Caranza Ruiz uh, Luizaga from uh, from Mafix uh, for for the Norway newsletter, and Miss Amelie Esperou uh, from Eatholes uh, for the Canadian newsletter, Tennis Watch newsletter. So uh, all that information you will find also in the chat and for sure also in the presentation we like to send you after the uh, webinar. Uh, may I remind you uh, that uh, there is a B2B meeting platform on advanced technologies for your business is still open. It comes from the STARS project uh, which has been finished on 30th of September 2023. Uh, but uh, the platform remains open uh, until 30th September 2025. And it is possible that you permanently can arrange meetings with other platform participants at any time. Uh, the only precondition is that you have a short profile on this platform uh, that is easily to make, uh, to make uh, with some information about your company, uh, with some information on uh, maybe on uh, your uh, uh, products or your services. And you find here, for instance, the marketplace uh, uh, section where it could be used to, uh, uh, to describe your products your services to make you a more interesting for other participants to get in contact to you. So this uh, platform is supported uh, either by ERCI and also by the Enterprise Europe Network. So uh, this uh, session here is uh, recorded as uh, all ERCI webinars are recorded too and uh, they will be published at uh, the STARS YouTube channel and uh, uh, the link will be uh, in this presentation and in the chat and uh, in the end yes uh, I would remind you uh, on the EU consultation of the of the uh, uh, of the LIDA 2030 project it is very important that companies coming from the railway sector uh, uh, contribute if they uh, have disruptions of, of their value chain or not. Uh, if they are infrastructure managers, uh, train operating companies, uh, OEMs or suppliers from the first, uh, second or third uh, tier level, uh, Please, you are all invited to contribute to this survey. 
and uh, I just make a uh, copy and paste uh, to uh, uh, to put all links again uh, to all uh, available language versions of the consultation uh, into the chat. And so you can simply click uh, your uh, uh, preferred version of the consultation and may answer uh, to it. So uh, coming to an end, uh, I want to introduce uh, our future plans for the webinar. The next webinar is foreseen uh, for the 17th of January. Uh, that would be the first webinar uh, uh, in the next year. Uh, hopefully it uh, will function. Uh, we are uh, still searching for uh, a topic. If you are interested, please uh, come to us and <laughs> propose uh, uh, something. And uh, yes, uh, you can uh, put uh, your uh, proposals uh, into the, into the uh, feedback form. Uh, that would be the easiest way. And uh, yes, uh, there is one uh, news. Uh, there is, uh, uh, again, the link uh, to this feedback form. Uh, thank you, Guido, for, for, for doing so. And uh, if there are no other questions, uh, I take the opportunity uh, on behalf of ESCI uh, to wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you for participation. You will receive within the next days a follow up uh, email with all uh, the material uh, and the link uh, to uh, the recording and uh, all the best to you and your families. Have a nice time. Goodbye.